Hi, my name is Sim Hurdle, and I am presenting the 2017 Peru Floods and Mudslides. So, to start everything off, I'd just like to ask a question. What happens when a country with a weak infrastructure gets 10 times the amount of rain it normally does in a short time span? And to answer this, I'd like to just show a few pictures. Here, we have what used to be a functional railroad, and on the right side of this picture, we have the rushing water and well, very muddy water that has been sent down by these floods and towards the middle top of this picture you can see where this water was so powerful that it completely eroded the land that was under this railroad and holding it up so now it is completely unusable for the next picture we also have some more erosion to where you would assume that there was a road somewhere in this area but it was completely eroded off by this powerful water and to the point where this bus fell off the side of this hill. And next we have a picture of an 18 wheeler that is stuck in what looks to be at least a foot and a half of solid mud. And we can tell this is solid because in the back, back right side of the picture we can see two men walking across this. So that just shows you how thick and solid this mud was and as you can tell if something is that deep and that thick it would take days or maybe even weeks to get vehicles out of conditions like that and so that brings along another question it's how how did they bring in resources and help to people when these roads and these railroads and these trucks that were already there are completely stuck and that was a major part of why this this flood was so devastating. Almost any help that was brought to these people was by air. And as you know, bringing supplies in by air is extremely inefficient because you're solely relying on helicopters that cannot carry very much resources or people. And in this next picture, we have an example of the lines that were established in different roads in different areas of the country during this time that were basically established and put into place so that people would not be taken away by this very powerful moving muddy water and be swept under and drowned. And this picture shows two or three guys trying to help this girl from being taken under and shows you the sheer force of this moving water. And for the final picture, we have an area that used to have some type of building in it, but is completely unrecognizable. There, there's, I mean, there's no even indication of what used to be in this area just because of the pure devastation. And all these pictures combined just show you how bad this disaster was and how powerful this water and mudslides just absolutely destroyed many buildings, roads, railroads, pretty much anything in its path. And so the next question you might have is, what caused this? So the 2017 floods in Peru were caused by El Nino conditions, which brought 10 times the normal amount of rain. And on this bottom right, we have a picture and as you can see in the picture, it's labeled blue is permanent water, which is your rivers, any really anything that's supposed to be there. And then in red, you have flooded areas. And as you can see, the flood, the, the red is much more visible and much more thicker in these areas. So, I mean, just thinking about how large these areas are compared to water that's supposed to be there. And so all this taken into consideration... In the next slide, we have results and some statistics from this natural disaster. So, there was more than 100 deaths, over 150,000 left homeless, thousands of kilometers of road and railroad destroyed, over 100 bridges collapsed, many sources of water were contaminated, and it's estimated that it was six to nine billion dollars worth of destruction. One of the most important pieces in this is that many of the water sources were contaminated. Because as was mentioned earlier, the only way to get resources to these people for some time was by air. So many of these areas just 
we're left without good, clean drinking water, which made this disaster that much more devastating. It was truly just a absolutely destructive flood and mudslide that came through this area that this area is still recovering today. And finally, in this last slide, I have my references. First, I have the map picture. Secondly, I have where all the other pictures came from, which was the Atlantic. And finally, the last two links are where my information came from. Thanks.